so basically what we are going to understand today is how you should approach your exam or rather what is to be done in the last lap okay okay so basically what is very important over here what is very important over here in the last lap that how you organize yourself okay how you make a schedule how you make a timetable for yourself okay how to also manage the stress that is there that will be there before any exam you have stress okay that is always there it is part and parcel of everything then i will come to what you have to do in the last lap that means the last lap of revision how it is to be done okay what is the manner of studying okay the exam paper what is to be how to approach the paper and how to approach the practicals as okay so the first very important thing that you have to understand is that you have to organize yourself okay so what do you mean by organizing yourself that is see if you if you are going to for example what is organization so basically the thing is if you are just reading topics okay without any set ideas or without any set papers okay so in that case you are not going to be able to have a track of what is to be read and you are going to miss out on some very basic topics okay so what is very very important that for your exam for your exam purpose you should be able to organize yourself what is the meaning of organization organization means that you know that there are four papers so for your exam you are having four papers right you have general pathology you have systemic pathology along with uh, sometimes the recent advances associated with the systemic pathology then you are having okay uh, the paper 3 hematology with cytology and you are having the recent advance so this is in general okay it might vary from university to university from boards to boards so depending on you know de depending on your uh, on your university you know it might differ so you have four important papers okay over here you have general path systemic pathology hematology and cytology along with that you have recent advances now this is the broad heading that you are having this is some kind of a broad heading apart from all these four stuff you also have a portion of tissue processing or basic histological techniques okay that is also there apart from that you also have to read some points from ihc for example they will ask you about the cytokeratin they will ask you to elaborate on cytokeratins or some other tumor markers okay or some other ihc markers okay or for example you might be asked a question on staining for example pap staining special steps pap staining or pap staining okay something like that then questions from clinical pathology can be there for example how do you evaluate a, a case of microcytic hypochromic anemia okay so these are some of the broader headings that i have discussed and these are some of the smaller headings that i have discussed so why have i discussed this part because questions are asked from all these parts together okay so first of all you have to have a very clear idea that what you are up against okay what you are up against so this is about the theory paper this is about the theory paper then you have the practical paper so basically if you see in the practical in the practical if you see you have different parts right so for example you have clinical biochemistry part okay wherein uh, you have the different kinds of tests that you have to do in the urine like the sugar ketone body and the proteins that you have to perform right sugar ketone body protein test that you should do in the exams okay apart from that you have the clinical pathology part okay you you might be given a fluid and you might be asked to do the cell count cell type okay so new bars chamber might be provided to you along with the fluid peripheral blood smear might be provided to is this will be done okay you you will have to take the blood you will have to smear it you will have to stain it okay and then you will have to describe the particular peripheral blood smear in the exam okay then urine examination is there so some of the other kind like i told you okay along with the clinical biochemistry the urine examination will be there wherein some you know one or two of these you know out of these three two tests you have to perform so urine examinations is the must along with that you will be provided with a preset amount of problem cards now every university they have their own problem cards and basically usually 95 98% of the times usually you all know what problem cards are being Uh, you know kept by the university because they will tell you just like in your mbbs you know about the problem cards over here also you will have an idea about the problem cards that they are going to keep and there are select number of cases 
so there is nothing much to do over here you can score 100% marks over here okay so apart from this clinical pathology section okay apart from this section you will be having grossing you will be having a station on grossing or autopsy okay a station on grossing and autopsy viva will be there then you know in your clinical pathology they might also keep a malarial parasite slide or any you know infectious agent slide might be kept as well okay apart from that you have the different slide examinations like histopathology okay hpe is there along with histopathology you are having fnac you also have uh, hematology okay so basically we have already shared with you the list of these slides so whatever important exam slides are there please go for those only first do not go for the rare exam slide always remember approximately in the range of 23 to 30 slides can be kept in the exam depending on your university your examiner so out of this 23 to 30 slides that will be there majority majority means approximately 70 to 80% will be histopathology slide 10 to 20% will be your hematology slide and another 10 to 20% might be your cytology slide so this is very important that you prepare accordingly and out of these 23 to 30 slide 80% will be very easy and common slide okay but the rest will be little bit difficult or different or you might come across certain slide that you have never seen in the exam now always remember even if example out of these uh, you know 30 slides if for example you have only done five correct okay that is not an issue okay it is not a deciding factor for your passing or failing it is how you have honestly described the particular slide whatever your diagnosis is how you are defending your diagnosis that is what is important okay so do not get worried in the exam okay if you think that most of your slides are wrong what will happen it is it will be the same for all these students so do not take tension in this particular part okay even if you have a wrong diagnosis but you have the correct description okay and you can defend your diagnosis you will get more marks than maybe a person who have just written the right diagnosis but he cannot express or answer any question so it does not matter whether your slide diagnosis is right or wrong what matters is how much you are honest with that particular slide okay then you might be having some instruments okay so i think i have already discussed in details about these points in the approach to the you know third year on the, you know for the exam going batch but what i am trying to tell you over here then the examiner might keep certain exam charts okay then uh, a section on tissue processing will be there you might be taken to the tissue processing room for us in our exam the examiner had taken us to the room he had given he had given a paraffin block and he asked us to cut the sections and to do the hne staining then for some students he had also asked to do the uh, uh, special stain any one special stain usually they are combining hne with the past staining so it is important that you know how to cut the section and it is important that you know how to uh, you know uh, how to stain so repeatedly i have been saying this from the very first day that this is very very important okay examiners do make you you know cut the sections and to stain the slides and this is a very important okay so tissue processing in your tissue processing in your university if for example they are having a frozen section they are having a cryostat machine so they will ask you about the uh, that frozen section as well so you, so you should remember the, these points very 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 clearly okay then after that we also have some portion of micro teaching so micro teaching portion is already there i have already told you about the micro teaching part you will be given some topic maybe one day before the exam only you will be given that this may be your topic or you you may be given 10 topics and out of that maybe any one may be asked to you so you have to prepare those 10 topics and go it was like this for us it might vary from university to university and finally you are having a grand viva okay so basically these are the these are the things that you will see in the theory and in the practical now what is very important though there are multiple parts in the practical okay practicals are relatively easier and no one fails in practical usually okay the problem that arises is in the theory paper so that is why right now you should be preparing for the theory okay because theory see if uh, you have passed in the theory okay so they will 100% pass you only but for example if you have passed in the in the in the practicals which most of them they do 
okay so it is very difficult to you know alter your marks in the theory if you have not done well in the theory okay so if you are just touching 50% it is all right they, they might pass you but if for example out of 100 you are getting 20 25 30 like that then no one is not going to pass you okay so majority of the students who fail they are failing especially in pathology they are failing because of poor performance in the theory so that is why you have to be very very uh, you know you 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 should be very very uh, uh, you know uh, diligent uh, with your theoretical knowledge for passing okay theory is very important for passing now having said that just remember okay if you see the last 5 years passing rate in case of the md exams of pathology it is more than 98% and for dnb exam it is more it is in the range of 92 to 94% okay so usually there is a 100% chance that you will pass there is not an issue at all every one passes in md you remember this point seldom you know seldom anyone fails okay so remember this point very clearly do not get afraid in your exams every one of you who are enrolled in simply pathology you will pass 100% you will pass okay even those who are not enrolled they will pass also because passing is not that much uh, you know difficult it is after passing when you go out for practice that then your life becomes difficult when then the true true thing comes in you know the the reality will hit you after that so in that case knowledge is important but anyways we are here for the exam so always remember everyone passes the exam provided i will tell you certain tips and tricks that you should follow so now that you know that this is the organization that is there i am having four papers to complete okay i this is the syllabus you go through the last five year questions now once you have gone through the questions you know which are the must to do topics in the exam that you have to cover in the exams right so this is must to do topic that you have to cover in the exam so the next important step that is there is the time table so a lot of questions that sir how we should have a routine okay how we should study sir okay so personally also i have guided many students and over here today at large i am guiding every one of you so the second important point is that how do you make a time table for your studying so one thing that is very important that i tell everyone you should diversify diversify whatever you read what is the meaning of that the meaning is you should not keep one subject for one day that means today i am just going to read general pathology or just going to do systemic pathology chances are you are going to become bored very soon and your efficiency will come down so whatever you can cover for example in 10 hours in one day you might cover you know effectively only 6 hours of that even in in, in spite of spending 10 hours that day. so it is very important for diversifying whatever you are reading because once you diversify okay you will feel nice okay and you will have two things will happen first of all you will not get bored second thing you will have a feeling that you have covered a lot okay so that is a very important plus point that you should understand okay the 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 important steps before i start the time table is that that please don't overdo you should not overdo yourself you have to keep one to two hours for yourself so you should have your time in which you can do anything that is your wish which might be watching any series which might be going out walking which might be your tea break or whatever it is you should be your time because at the end of the day you will be uh, looking forward to that one to two hours that is going to give you the energy to read nicely because you know at the end if i complete everything nicely then i will be able to enjoy those one to two hours for myself okay next next thing is that in the first hour of the day in the first half of the day i will tell you what is the meaning of first half first half means before lunch in the first half of the day if you can if you can you please switch off your mobile device please switch off your phone because you will not agree with me but that is the biggest distraction and the biggest time killer that you are having okay you might be reading 15 minutes but again 20 minutes you are in your phone in instagram or in facebook or in your whatsapp chat or whatever so please switch off your phone that is why i am telling the term not even airplane mode you switch off your phone for the first half of the day in the second half you can switch on your phone and do whatever activity you want to do this is very very important now i will give you a basic idea how to approach okay i will give you 
day wise so for example you are approaching day 1 okay so remember the subjects are divided into two types okay there are certain heavy subjects and there are certain light subjects so general pathology and systemic pathology by default i am taking them as heavy subjects whereas hematology cytology and rest everything rest everything means that i am taking the tissue processing part or the basic histological techniques part clinical pathology parts ihc part okay all the different all the rest of them that that i had discussed with you these are all the other sections okay or the tissue staining or the stain part okay or for example the recent advances these are all the other lighter parts okay whereas the heavy part is your general pathology so how do i design a schedule for the same so you so i am telling according to myself what i would have done now the timings might vary some people they are morning person some people they are night person okay so accordingly whatever is your hour of study you might design it accordingly it is not a hard and fast that you have to follow like that so if you are i am a morning person so i follow a morning shift so for example if i wake up approximately say around i wake up 6 am okay then for example i do my business okay i have my tea i do my business i take my book around 6:45 am in the morning you should start reading so let's say on day 1 on day 1 you start reading general pathology okay so till what time will you read so in the first half of the day from 6:45 till approximately 10:45 am that is approximately 4 hours of good quality reading you read general pathology okay you take general pathology into account after that you might go for a 30 minute break you might grow for a 30 minute break okay that for example you might have tea or you might have some snacks or something okay just a half an hour break to relax your mind then again you start at 11:15 am okay so what is the next so already you have read the heavy topic that is the general pathology you have read good 4 hours you have given to the general pathology part okay so after that now what you do from 11:15 till approximately till approximately 1:45 or approximately 2 pm that is approximately 2.5 hours okay you read his hematology or you read cytology either of them you should read okay any one of them for example day 1 for example you read hematology okay so basically till 2 pm you have completed some portion a good portion a chunk of general pathology some portion of hematology and cytology or cytology you have covered now at 2 pm this is the time okay you take a break for 2 hours i am telling you to take a proper amount of break why am i telling you in this time you should have your lunch you should also take a short nap okay that short nap might be 1 hour why am i telling you this because if you are able to sleep for 1 hour or even 20 minutes or half an hour a nap if you can take then in that time then you know the efficiency for the second half of the day it shoots up okay it shoots up you know it, it shoots up very much and you are able to concentrate much better and you are able to reproduce you know much better if you take a short nap okay so having said that you again start up around 4 pm so from 4 o'clock okay from 4 o'clock directly to 6 o'clock 2 hours what is it that you should read in this time in this 2 hours whatever other points that i have taken up for example the clinical pathology part okay or for example the basic tissue processing or basic histopathological techniques part or the staining part okay any of them okay any of them you should understand which what you should read or the ihc markers you want to read or for example you want to read about the autopsy okay or for example so these are the basic things that you should be okay now for example at 6 o'clock okay at 6 o'clock you take a break again you take a 30 minute break a tea break and then around 6:30 pm so from 6:30 pm to 8:30 pm what is it that you should do so or till 8 8 o'clock now this is the time when you are quite tired and you have ultimately read a lot of things in 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 one day so basically at this point you are looking at something you know which is light 
so the lightest thing that comes over here is the recent advances okay recent advances i will tell you how to approach the recent advance also many of you people have also given you know you have given certain doubt that sir how i should prepare recent advance plus there might be certain new questions which you might to which you like which you would like to prepare yourself for so also the new questions okay also the new questions so this is this 2 hours of time should be for the recent advance and for the new questions that you are preparing so what is happening that in this particular manner you are addressing each and everything and you do not have that particular tension that when you are reading theory you are having uh, you know some uh, nervousness for the practicals and when you are reading for practicals you are having nervousness what will happen for theory so in this way if you are reading then you are covering each and everything and basically by the time you know exam comes you are actually exam ready and the best thing is that you will be able to answer more questions if you are going to read in this manner and you will have a lot of knowledge okay in this way if you read there are chances that you will be bored very very less so i will come to how to prepare for the different parts okay first let me just complete the schedule so around 10 from 8:30 till 10 or 10:30 okay you do whatever is your wish okay you enjoy you watch some series do anything that you like but give this your time go for a walk go for a sprint go for a run make your mind fresh okay around 10 or 10:30 pm you go to sleep and once you sleep you have to make sure that you have a good amount of 8 hours of sleep then you repeat the cycle again at 6:30 am again next morning you can repeat the cycle okay so this is something that is that is the cycle now for example for some of you you might start your day at 11 o'clock or at 12 o'clock or at 1 o'clock so you can shift the cycle according you understand what i'm trying to say so till now till now i have spoken about getting organized i have also spoken about the time table okay now i am going to discuss the next important part over here is basically that is the stress management okay that how you have to manage the stress now before i go to the stress management since many of you have asked me about how to prepare for the new questions and for the recent advance so let me tell you how to prepare for recent advance okay so for example recent advance is such a topic that that you know very few questions comes so i always tell everyone you have to read recent advance 23 24 and 25 25 is very important for this year covid related questions are getting asked now remember one thing i have seen there are lots of uh, you know pdfs and and ppts that are being circulated now please listen to me carefully it is much better that you read directly from recent advance 25 than to read from any other because i cannot vouch for the authenticity of that particular ppt okay so ppt as it is any ppt is 40 50 slides better you go and read the chapter from recent advance that is very very less so how do you read recent advance i want that everyone you buy a very small and short diary so for example if you are reading for example big bang theory or multi step progression of ca cancer for example so whatever important points are there you just write down 10 important lines that's it you write down 10 important lines in your diary this is the topic this is the line and you try to understand in the best possible way what is it that they are requiring okay just those 10 points are important you don't have to go into the depths of recent advance you will not be able to remember everything this is how you have to uh, you, you know uh, approach recent advance now i will tell you my story i was able to revise recent advance 23 and 24 we did not have 25 in our time i was able to revise both of them in approximately 2.15 hours 2 hours 15 minutes i was able to revise both recent advance 23 24 so how was it possible i used to follow this diary concept okay and i was able to answer most of the questions in my in my recent in fact i got the highest in the recent advances only okay so basically i got very good marks in recent advances because i used to follow like this now you might have a lot of new questions in your exam so for that i always tell all of you you please go to google scholar it is a specialized google search engine only for these research articles you just type down some recent advance research article that you are searching you will get list of articles 
go for the most authentic ones or you you will be able to understand which one is a good one you take those articles again you keep some time 15 20 minutes for reading those articles and some new things that have come up that you know may be asked in your exam okay so you go there are several articles but again i told you for doing this you have to do in within this time only between 6:30 to 8:30 only not before that okay not before that remember one thing uh, for example in other three papers for example there might be a set of total 300 questions only for paper 1 2 and 3 so you can master this very well and you can pass in these papers very nicely with good marks for recent advances there might be 1000 plus topics okay you cannot read and you cannot remember all of them so only you do those that is that, that are most important okay only you will do those that are most important even the examiner who is checking the paper even be sure he doesn't know about the recent advanced topics in details okay so it is it is enough that you write few important points for the recent advances is this point very very clear to everyone okay coming to the third important step everyone is talking about the stress management okay so first of all i have already spoken you know uh, about the the you know the passing rate in the mds usually it is around 90 to 99% in the in the in the dnb it is basically around 94 to 96% okay it is it is somewhat like this okay so what is very important over here uh, that you have to keep your mind very calm okay and what is it you have to take one day at a time okay one day at a time don't think about the exams from the first day you have started to read just one day at a time now just remember one thing if for example you are reading everything and if you are forgetting everything or you feel that everything is getting mixed up okay in this particular situation if you are reading everything you are forgetting and everything is getting mixed up then it means you are in the right direction because this is how every student who is reading a lot feels okay this is how you should feel because that means you are in the right path you are reading you are forgetting you are getting mixed up you are getting tensed up that means you are in the right direction but what is very important you should know that this is something very usual you are you were a mbbs student you have given mbbs exam now you have come for the md exams so it is the same thing over here nothing to worry about okay then for the stress management as i also told you that always remember what is what will be the worst situation that will happen for example you just think what is the worst that could happen you will fail so what even if you fail you will try again and you will pass is not an issue so if you imagine the worst situation then you do not get worried so you should not be worried about your exam you should not become you know very you know fearful else fear fear is going to take the better out of you and even if you have read something good and something nicely in your exams okay you will not be able to reproduce you think of that you are having an opportunity to sit for this md dnb exam you are not going to have this opportunity again means opportunity in the sense that you if you fail you will give once again but in a span of one year you will give only once and maybe this is the first, uh, for majority of you 99% of everyone is going to pass so this is the only time you have the ability and the opportunity to enjoy this exam so read as if this is the exam that i am giving and and i will not have this and really you know md exams are quite fun because you know it is a really good feeling the practical exams are more fun because you have never sat for those exams and everything is new you will enjoy as well you will receive special treatment okay because you are exam candidate so you know enjoy it you should enjoy it very much in the sense that you know you should be excited okay i will do this i will do that i will this is how i am going to manage my paper so what is very important always you should remember that you will pass 100% everyone is passing you all are going to pass 100% as well okay there is no doubt in that believe in yourself and if sometimes you think that for example you will not pass or something like just think the worst situation what is going to happen you will fail na there is no problem if i fail i will fail i will sit again so what i don't have to become so the thing is you should be in your mind that you will always do the best what should be there that i am going to give my 100% and whatever is going to happen the result 
i am not going to think much about that because you can't do anything about it but what you can do is you can sit and read today and you can control that part only you cannot control what is going to come in the exam paper you can read as much as possible that is in the syllabus to the best of your ability without getting worried about that understand what i am trying to say so basically this is very 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 important that you should understand you should give you 100% okay and this is how you should manage the stress okay you should not you know think too much about the result you should just be thinking you know about how to take one day at a time and you should be very systematic as to how you should approach now i am going to tell you one thing i i did not remember actually my zoom uh, license has expired so basically if this meeting is going to end in 5 minutes then i am going to share a fresh link and everyone please join the fresh link and we are going to continue from that part okay so very importantly now comes the last lap okay the fourth important thing that comes is the last lap so basically in the last lap what do you mean by the last lap the last lap means the last 23 to 24 days this is how much time you need for the last lap okay some of you might need a lot less than that some of you might need a lot more than that but this is the average time that you require in the last lap and that is inclusive of the time needed before the paper one as well so i am just telling you few things so see over here how you should read for example general pathology should be covered in 6 days now 6 days i don't means 6 whole days 6 days as, as in i means 10 into 4 approximately 40 hours because you are giving 4 hours per day okay according to what i have actually taught so approximately 6 days time you should require for general pathology then for systemic pathology if you see you require another 6 days okay this is just in keeping in mind with the number of hours not daily okay then for hematology cytology you need around 5 days 3 days for hemat 2 days for cyto then for recent advance you keep around 2 days it is more than enough for recent advances okay so basically this comes up to around 18 to 19 days okay to that before your general pathology exam you are just going to read general pathology right so four days of time is enough because this will be your second revision from the first okay so four days of time will be enough for you to revise only general pathology in that time so on an average 23 to 24 days are required for you for the cycle okay is this point very clear to everyone yes okay now before i proceed towards how to study manner of studying and to the exam approach now you people can ask me any kind of doubt you have till this point or you want to raise any kind of doubt yes no doubts okay okay if you don't have any doubt you can also type in your doubts which i will see later on and i will i'm going to come back that at that too okay so let me just complete and we are having around 3 minutes of time so let me at least complete okay complete the remaining steps so what is the manner of studying okay what is the manner of studying so what is very important that whenever you read as i told you i used to keep a very short diary with myself okay now suppose if you are reading general pathology you are reading one topic for example you are reading adaptation so what i used to do i used to just write down the keywords that these are the six keywords that has to be in the answer or this are the six headings that has to be in my answer and then you have to elaborate so if you start to read from point a to point z completely each and every point if you are going to read okay then what is going to happen you will not be able to memorize everything but what you have to understand it whenever you are reading any topic for example you are reading the lab diagnosis of microcytic hypochromic anemia so there are certain points that you keep in the mind that this is what i am going to write this is what i am going to ask this is what i am going to keep so you if you keep a short diary and if you just write down the keywords for a particular topic that is going to help you immensely one day before the exam okay everyone you have your own way and own manner so i am not going to you know uh, say that my way is the best way whatever you are comfortable with okay okay let me see we are having one minute time in zoom so let me see 
yes when to read for practical see whatever i told you whatever i explained for you in terms of your division of the day that is covering your practicals na okay anyone who are having 10 days of time so whatever you have done till now you, it is not like you have not read anything right so whatever you have read till now then just remember last 2 to 3 days you keep for your general pathology and the remaining 7 to 8 days you concentrate on the way that i have told you you know diversify your reading where to read autopsy from okay i have already shared some autopsy notes is a very two page or three page note very small note it is and i have also shared the washington manual for the heart usually in the autopsies most of the questions they are asking from your you know grossing only the tata manual only they are asking okay i i will share the same to you all again okay after this meet okay okay less than 1 minute is left okay so what we can do is i i will stop the share and i am going to uh, again i am going to share one link to you all and those of you interested next i am just going to uh, you know discuss about how to approach the exam paper both theory and the practical what are the do's tips and tricks the very important part okay so i'm just going to stop the share and i'm going to resend a new link okay so now the very important part so we have read about the manner of studying how you have to read the you know what is the manner of your reading you should know then very importantly the most important part that most of you you know don't understand so this is what you are doing okay this is what you have done till now this is what i have already spoken about in the exam and i have given you a fair bit of an idea how to make your timetable and how to organize yourself organization is the most important thing you should also know in which part where which answer is one day before the exam it should not happen that you are searching for one answer anywhere okay so remember this thing so the exam paper first i am going to speak about the theory paper okay first we are going to speak about the theory paper so what is there in the theory paper if you see there are certain points that you should keep in mind first of all the first and the most important thing for the theory admit card have you all all generated your admit card from your university this is very important i have seen students who have actually not you know created the admit card not collected the admit card in the exam they have gone directly because you people are alone there are not many students not in much contact with each other with the colleagues you are silent partners so as a result okay you don't know where your admit card is so take care of your admit card generate your admit card enquire when you are going to receive the admit card once you get the admit card get it laminated okay and ask before them whether they accept laminated card and also make a screenshot and scan the file and make a duplicate copy of the admit card as well and keep it number 1 number 2 thing is that this is a very silly thing but yet i am telling you prepare your pencil bag okay whatever you have whatever you pay your pen is there carry always four to five pens with yourself because in one exam one pen can finish very easily so always carry a good quality ball point pen or roller ball point pen will be a very good pen okay because they should write very smoothly in the exam okay avoid using any gel pens but if you have a habit of using gel pen that is all right but usually i avoid using gel pen because they blot in the exam that should not happen so once you enter the exam hall okay once you have entered the exam hall you should know there are certain important things that you should know first of all it is not the kind of handwriting you have but the clarity of your writing is very important okay you should write very clearly so clarity of writing is very important okay so you should be very clear as to what you are writing number 1 number 2 thing that you should understand that now for example for us in west bengal yet now we are having around 10 questions for the exam each carrying 10 marks so literally you are having 15 minutes per question you are having 15 minutes per question in the exam so you should carry a watch very importantly you should carry a watch okay with yourself which is showing correct timing and why it is important for you to carry the watch because you cannot give more than 15 minutes on an average per answer what do you mean on an average some questions might take 20 minutes okay whereas other questions will be short and might take only 10 minutes so on an average it should come around 15 minutes per answer okay so it should not be like around 2 hours has already gone and you have answered only four questions in the last one hour you have a pressure of of completing six question now 
many of you must be thinking that this is something okay not very important are what why sir is telling about our, our time man, man, management because this is the fact i have seen students leave out two three answers that they know very nicely okay in the exams because they have not managed their time because they thought that this is very easy most of you you do not have any practice exams in your universities and finally after three years you are sitting for one exam so the practice of writing is not there okay that everyone will accept that thing from you so you should very importantly you should understand how you have to write your answer in 15 minutes that means if for example a question on diabetes mellitus comes on the pathogenesis and they have not mentioned type 1 or type 2 that means you have to write both so in that scenario you have to make up your mind what are the points that you are going to write in the exam do you know what i'm trying to say i'm it means for example if a question on on for example alcoholic liver disease is coming that is pretty short pretty short in robins or non alcoholic fatty liver disease is coming nash is coming non alcoholic steroid hepatitis they are very very small so you can complete the answer in 10 minutes also that is not not an issue but if you are getting a very lengthy answer okay for example if you are getting a very very long answer then you might not be able to remember that or you might not be able to write everything in the exam so you have to shorten that just because you know an answer doesn't mean that you are going to be with that answer for the entire period okay just remember this thing okay regarding the question paper as i told you the questions might vary some of you might have short notes also some of you might have long, very long answer question like 25 mark uh, sl type questions might might be there as well so it is varying from university to university but you have to divide your time and you have to understand what amount of time i will give to each answer now for an average i am telling you out of this 10 questions that you see or come across in the exam always remember that around 7 to 8 questions will be very simple question they will be simple question they will be direct question it will be something that you have already learned about you have heard about and you have read about it 1000 time before in worst case scenario around 2 to 3 questions might be of the beat topic okay something that you might have read about somewhere but you do not know a lot about that so this is true not only for your md pathology but across all the disciplines of md so if you take any question paper you will see this is the standard pattern i am not telling in the odd paper in the odd paper that means those who are repeating or those who have not completed the 3 years of residency because of some reason they are giving in the odd batch exam in the odd batch it is it becomes very difficult because the questions actually they are not very straight forward okay they are little different but for the standard paper usually they will give you that many questions that are easy to answer that is not difficult that will be simple and direct so directly you can answer them but you can expect around 2 to 3 question but this is in the worst scenario okay it might be that in one paper all the 10 questions were easy in the next paper it might be five or six questions were easy four questions were difficult so there can be a mix and match and also one thing one thing very important you have four papers now always remember one thing why am i telling you to read in this manner that you should read everything in one day you should have have a habit of reading all things in a day okay why am i telling you this thing because it is not necessary that question from paper 2 will not be asked in paper 1 or question from paper 1 will not be asked in paper 2 or for example question from paper 3 might not be asked here and there so there might be slight overlap not like 100% paper 3 will be asked in one that is that will not be there but for example certain cytology questions might be asked in paper 1 so that you just see according to your paper pattern you will understand that which questions are asked in which paper so okay so some universities have a different kind of thing some universities you do also include recent advanced question related to that pa paper in that paper also okay for example the concept of emt okay the concept of your emt theory that is there okay so emt theory in your neoplasia that is there or concept of matrix metalloproteases so these are certain recent advanced question they might be included in paper 1 also because they have relation with neoplasia understand what i am trying to say this might be there in some universities okay so paper so questions can be asked in different different papers also okay of a different section so for 1 2 3 you must have seen that i have basically given 6 hours okay i have allotted 6 hours in a day 4 plus 2 or 4 plus 2.5 around 6.5 hours i have allotted to these three papers and only 2 hours per day i have given to paper number 4 okay just remember and paper number 4 not only that along with that you are having 
uh, you know different kinds of questions also that which which is there in paper number 4 and all new questions that you have not covered not only for recent recent advance one hour is enough but for new questions you have to uh, you know so just, basically uh, i was just talking about you know how the papers come and how you should divide your time also between the different papers and you should not spend a lot of time on the recent advance so for the recent advance as i've already explained you have to read the recent advance 23 24 25 again hematology also have their own uh, recent advance question and hematology there are three uh, recent um, advance hematology like recent advance 1 2 and 3 so you are not required to read all the three recent advances from hematology okay so what all you will read for the recent advance only those questions which are asked in your exam for example hemovigilance blood substitutes okay they are asking or mrd so these are all questions from the recent advances of hematology so you see that in your last five year questions what are such hematology questions that are com- com- coming in your exam for example what are the current concepts of platelet transfusion okay so these are some of the important questions that is uh, you know very, very for example apla syndrome now apla syndrome i have covered very nicely in the general pathology so basically these are some of the important recent advance questions from hematology that has to be covered because they are routinely asked in the exam so you please go through your question papers and you see what all is asked now for this year hematolymph uh, hem, 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 means you should not miss the who hematolymphoid updates they will be asked already in the pgi chandigarh exam if you go through okay i have already given the question paper in the group if you see some student had sent me so in that uh, you can see that already the mds update or what is the update of the the new mds that has come in what is the update with regards to that i have discussed in details about the mds topic okay and i have incorporated what are the changes also so this is very very important that for this year two to three questions you might expect and you might expect a lot of questions in your viva as well so do not leave those in the recent advance section okay in the recent advances sometimes they are asking some of the markers like cytokeratins or some of the other markers they are something some markers they are asking or they will ask about the staining staining usually they are asking in the paper 3 but it might vary from university to university so please also go through the, these things as well okay so regarding your question paper i have discussed these points okay now one important thing is that that whenever you are writing the question paper whenever you are writing all the answers in your question paper in your exams when i was checking some of the question papers last year there is some problem that i see with certain students and that makes the examiner irritated the thing is whenever you are writing maybe for example you have question 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 10 10 so it may not be that you know all the questions nicely and you may want to answer some questions first so the rule that i follow that whatever questions that you know best for example out of these 10 questions you know question number 1 question number 4 question number 6 8 9 and 10 so you know these questions very well so you should answer the question 1 first followed by the question 4 followed by question 6 8 9 10 why it is very important because you are having time you should cover them and whatever you don't know you should cover them in the later half whatever you don't know you should cover in the later half okay so it is very important whatever you know first you write them down very nicely so that once these are over you are confident i have written very nicely some of the questions okay so in that situation always remember that you should write the things that you know and you should always label the questions nicely you should label that this is answer to the question number 1 this is how you should answer answer number 1 you should label and there should be and you should be you know for example if you are using answer 1 then for example if you are writing the answer you should wherever you are ending the answer at least give something like this that the answer has ended then you go to the next question understand what we are trying to say so this is very important and another important thing is about the questions that you don't know now for example as i told out of these 10 questions you know 6 so what about this 2 3 5 and 7 will you leave it blank no you should always fill up you should always fill up your answer with something or the other this much you are reading you can fill up anything over there just try to write something that the examiner is able to give you some marks now for example he might not give you full marks now out of 10 for example you have written something very weird and you know out of the 
block he might give you a 3 and a half that 3 and a half is not less or some answer you know you know you don't know that well maybe you you get a 5 over here okay or some answer for example okay uh, you have for example you did not know anything and you have not written anything just you have written two three lines and you left you will just get one or one and a half like that okay so this is very very important that you do not leave the page empty because these little marks here and there are will be the deciding factor for your passing in theory because when the no examiner they don't want to fail you every examiner wants to pass you only but you should have you know you should give them the opportunity to pass you okay so do not leave any answer blank you should write something or the other in the answers now always remember one thing okay always remember one thing for example there is one question which is very very long and there is other question which is maybe of two pages now for example this one answer if you write very nicely you might take 16 to 17 pages just for writing one answer like diabetes and this answer for example might take you just four pages to write now at the end when the examiner will see both the papers it is not like you have written 16 to 17 pages maximum he will go seven and a half only and here also you will get seven and a half so what is the moral of the story if our answer is very big you should learn to shorten it and write only the relevant points you should try to reduce it to six to eight pages okay because by writing more pages the examiner will not be able to give you more marks okay you will get the same amount of marks for that question so that is how you should be very smart when you are answering a theory paper okay this is very 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 important okay now coming to the coming to the practical any doubts anyone is having with regards to this okay in any ways i will give you people time in the end what you people can do is right now you can start writing your doubts in the message so that after i complete i will solve them each you know one by one now for the practical for the practical what all is very important now first of all always remember you are in that department for 3 years the hod of the department will pass you and he is ha having most control so even the examiner external is saying anything don't become afraid if you are a good student you have done the work nicely in the last 3 years you you know everyone in the department know what you are and what you do <laughs> even with the worst students the teachers they don't fail them okay because there is some kind of emotion connection they will always pass you especially in the mds why in mds passing rate is very high because the same set of teachers are there and they will help you also in the exam okay so in the practical practical is far more easy than the theory paper you should just prepare for theory and you should just pass theory once you pass the theory no one will fail you in practical so basically in the practicals the things that are is very very important the most important thing that is deciding factor for your practical exam is your thesis if you do not take your thesis you are not going to pass so this is a ticket to passing that is you have to carry the thesis the second thing is you have to be dressed like a doctor okay you have to be dressed like a doctor you should be clean shaved you should be very much presentable okay your manner of speaking should be very polite and honest okay just remember this thing even if you are answering three questions out of 10 questions asked but you are honest in your approach and you are not answering something which is completely wrong if you are not going right and left and not irritating the examiner you will pass even with a very good mark okay remember this point very clearly okay okay very importantly do not argue do not argue with the examiner now remember one thing most of the examiner who are will be coming for taking exams they are very old okay and they might not be up to date with whatever changes that are coming in who 5th edition so what is very important if the examiner is saying something as wrong but you know it is right do not argue that no sir it is written over there it is right because they have an ego they will only give you marks so you will not argue with the examiner whatever they will ask you either answer it or politely say that sir or ma'am i don't know or i cannot recall at the present moment i am very sorry i cannot recall at the present moment you have to be very polite and gentle with the examiners okay so examiners usually they are whenever they are coming for exam or taking any kind of exam they are in a very good mood because they get to travel okay so basically in that good mood they are not in the mood to fail in, in, in anyone they want to pass everyone and they have 
gone through multiple exams they know exactly how you think okay so don't worry okay so apart from this apart from this as i have already spoken about the different stations uh, do not worry in the different stations just attend each and every station and be very smart be polite be calm okay and most importantly try and sleep before the practicals okay you should have a good amount of sleep because if you cannot recall the questions then it will become little difficult for you okay it should not be like like you know that that you are not being able to answer any question so you should not go blank in the exam and for that reason sleep is very very important so here i think i have discussed the multiple points which are important in your exam and multiple things that are very important now you people tell me what are your specific doubts with regards to your exam so that i can answer you all okay i am giving you 1 minute or 2 minutes time to write down your doubts then i am going to individually solve those doubt you might either ask them directly or you can type it down as well okay so someone has asked me thesis related questions will be asked in practicals yes absolutely there is a grand viva and i, I think 20 marks is there for your uh, thesis if i if i am not wrong around 20 marks is is kept for your thesis question so yes a uh, questions will be asked on your thesis so what are the questions they usually ask first of all they will ask you the thing what is your study what is the name of your study what are you doing they are not going to read everything so you should be able to at least say what is this like clinical you know clinical pathological correlation study between ecg7 uh, you know oncoproteins and between the different stages of cervical carcinoma so whatever is your thesis you should be able to speak about the thesis then they will ask you what is significance what are the methods that you have used so you should at least read you know you should be at least you know you should at least know because you are making the thesis you yourself are the creator of thesis so i don't think they will uh, create you know a lot of problem so yes thesis do carry marks and you will have to uh, you know uh, answer them thesis will have marks then the next question is highlighting answers and using color pen is it a good idea if the university doesn't specify to stick to black and blue only now remember one thing uh whatever you are saying for the class 10 and class 12 board exam it is a good idea and especially it is good only for the cbse student that i have seen please do not use this there are two things why am i telling you uh if you want to highlight highlight with the same pen that you are using okay do not use different colors uh because i think in the university usually they specify you have to write down either with black or blue ball point pen they do not even say gel they say they will clearly mention ball point pen so go through the you know behind or in the admit card the examination instruction is there so read the examination instructions very clearly do not go for this highlighting things uh, as of now unless and until you know you are sure very sure about it and the examiners also say yes you can use unless and until it is like that do not use okay and and very importantly very importantly what i am trying to tell you is that that do not use them because it is also going to waste a lot of time if you are constantly you know you are highlighting with other pens it will take a lot of time so it is better that you highlight only with the pen that you are using just underline that is more than enough sir only 10 days left should i give all 10 days for general and recent advance paper now see doctor what is very important is that that i am speaking in general how to approach the exam taking into consideration that you are having 24 days at least before the exam okay so basically now different people are in the different phase now depending on whether or what is left in your exam or for example you are revising something so it is not like like for example if your system of pathology hematology cytology is over in that situation you can uh, you know go for general and recent advances but for example if certain portions are left a huge chunk is left for revision then along with general pack you have to give some time for those kind of revision also because you have back to back papers i think if i'm not wrong you have back to back papers yes means i think you have one day gap after every exam okay next question in grand viva what should we focus on is there any specific topic now see in grand viva okay and i also forgot to mention one thing in any paper theory paper classification of tumors are added now as i told you many of you have requested me that sir please uh, give us the new latest who fifth edition classification i have given i have made and i have fulfilled the request but one thing is there that you will not be able to remember even a single classification in accordance with fifth edition so the only good thing or the only 
wise thing to do is you open your robins whatever classification is giving at least you will be able to say and you will be able to write down write that down in the exam so in the exam one or two questions on classifications will be there like classify ovary and tumors or classify pituitary tumors or classify uh, you know gestational trophoblastic disease like that so this classification of tumors will be there and as much as possible that is why i always say for one reading or for example when you are reading a single chapter first time in the second year reading going through fifth edition classification is all right but for the exam you will not be able to remember so read robins for classification okay acha for your grand viva as i am telling you anything and everything can be asked now what are the things that they will ask you mostly in the grand viva they are usually asking you whatever you have answered you know whatever is you know uh, whatever uh, exam slides that is there for example if there is exam slide on osteosarcoma they might ask you about the bone tumors or or hematology you have uh, got an acute leukemia so they might ask you uh, you know with regards to the classification of all they might now remember one thing it is not like the first question on hematology will be discuss the updates no that will be the last question okay that will be the last question so whenever for this year remember whatever you are describing you describe according to the fourth edition if the teacher by itself is saying what are the changes in the fifth edition only then you utter okay only then you are going to utter the word of fifth edition else you will stick to the fourth edition only okay so remember always the teacher will ask the basics they will ask you define neoplasia they will not ask you something which is very difficult they will ask you something which is very basic okay what is edema what is the mechanism of edema or what are adaptation okay what is the difference between reversible irreversible injury okay what are the vascular events uh, just few point that you they just want to see whether you are you know what is the difference between benign and malignant tumors some simple question define neoplasia something like that okay these are the question that they will ask okay acha in the grand viva one more thing i want to tell you some examiners not all maybe 10% of the case some examiners might bring certain charts okay and also in your university they might prepare certain charts for example in some university uh, you know they are uh, doing special studies on the renal biopsy so they will have electron micron study and they might have uh, immunofluorescence study as well but this is not true for all universities so if those universities which are having such charts so you see those charts and you will be able to answer it is not like you will not be able to answer okay so sometimes they might in certain universities they might have such charts okay in which they are specializing on the renal study so in those case whatever charts are present in your university you prepare them accordingly okay so some charts in my university and your university will not be the same okay so again charts can be asked in your grand viva in the grand viva only there are four five teachers who are studying and all of them can bombard questions from anywhere okay again there is a viva on the tissue processing also they will ask you what are the fixatives classify them mechanism of action of fixatives what do you use in your university how you prepare the 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 formalin for using inside the histopathology lab so all these practical questions they will ask they will ask you what is cell block how do you carry out cell block in your institute all these things they will ask okay so certain practical questions they will ask sir is there a theory grand viva in practical exam yes as i told you there is a grand viva yes we have a pedagogy session in our college what sort of question as i have already shared one article on the pedagogy that is basically you are asking about the micro teaching right or how teaching should be conducted if i am not wrong so basically i as i already explained one micro teaching session will be there wherein they will evaluate this is in accordance with the nmc guideline that i am telling so that is there and as i told you depending on whatever uh, questions are you know whatever um, uh, things which are asked in your exam they might ask okay but pedagogy as a uh, you know separate uh, competency is not there in the national medical council okay drawing diagram is important to all questions see drawing diagrams for example this is not like a mbbs but yes if you find a time to draw the, usually they do not ask if they ask to write down the morphological tree usually they do not ask to draw diagram but if you find the time only if you find the time then you may draw certain diagram okay but very simple diagram that may not take a lot of time for theory doing last 5 to 7 years university question is sufficient yes see please remember that for theory i didn't say that it is sufficient 
but usually around 80 to 90% of the questions are coming from last 5 to 7 years so what is very important that first you should cover those 7 years last 5 to 7 years after that if you are getting time then you should go for other things which you feel is important and can be asked in the exam usually i tell everyone that general pathology you read from entirety you read everything in general pathology for systemic pathology it is vast you will not be able to revise you have to narrow, narrow, narrow down your stuff okay for hematology cytology they are very limited there is not much to read in hematology cytology okay again in recent advances there are unlimited things to read in in the recent advances so again in recent advances you should first cover recent advanced 23 24 25 then the recent advanced questions that is being asked in the hematology section see the last 5 7 years what are the repetitive questions which are being asked in the recent advance and in the recent advance remember around 50% 40 to 50% questions will be new that you have not heard of because you cannot prepare for those questions there is more than 1000 2000 recent advance questions you will not be able to prepare everything so the basic idea is you prepare you just give limited amount of time first cover what i have already asked you to cover only after that when you get time you cover certain new questions or new topics okay okay any more doubts anyone is having yes are your doubts clear everyone if you have any more doubts we have 5 minutes time was this session helpful to you all did it clear many of your doubts okay 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 so i hope uh, you people have understood how to prepare and just remember one thing it is not the end of the world the exam and don't make it for in you know like you know like the end of the world and please remember whatever things that i have asked you people for the examination for the theory exam and for the practical exam please uh, you should uh, you know for the theory exam always remember whatever points i am telling you they are very practical points please be prepared about that from the very beginning okay go and check about your admit card very importantly make it ready so that in the last minute you don't have to have take a lot of tension okay 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 any more doubts anyone is having i am just keeping this window open those of you who have already understood you might leave the the class as well there is not an issue we are not going to discuss anything new right now just the doubts i will i will make a, a video recording i will make a recording i will compile the video and i will share it in the google drive so everyone can view whatever discussions we had today as i have already you know said in the group 30 days to go you have a you have 6 more days i have given you plan for 24 days okay 30 days is a lot lot of time you can actually master and get a gold medal in 30, 30 days not an issue if you have read in the past 3 years as well and yes also remember one thing see i will tell you uh see if you have worked for in the last 3 years okay it is going to show in your exam okay so it is not like uh, uh, you are worried that you know i have done so many good things i have read so many things uh, you know and in the last minute i will be judged on this one or two days no it is not like that okay examiners do realize that sometimes even good students they blank out and it is not an issue because for your support the teachers will be there they will tell the examiner external that is a good student maybe because of exam something like this has happened and please remember 100% everyone is going to pass the exam so don't think about pass fail just think about enjoying this session okay just enjoy just enjoy reading and just enjoy you know give some time to yourself as well i have been repeatedly telling you all about this thing okay i think everyone's doubt is clear